Rolling. My name is Tyler Lemke. We're here at Jones Technical Institute, and today I will teach you about ring gear runout. Um, if you look over here, we've got our uh, rear end here. We've got our dial indicator clamped to the housing, and the dial indicator has the plunge setting on the uh, back face of the ring gear. And as we spin the ring gear, the plunge is going to move in and out, and we're going to measure how many thousandths of an inch of run out the ring gear has. So pretty much seeing if it's warped or uh, bent. We've zeroed it out on the low spot. We'll go ahead and start to turn this guy and see how far it jumps on either side of the zero and count. Uh, we looks like so far we've only got about a half of a thousand jump, maybe a full thousand. We're heading back. Yeah, so this uh, this ring gear here is only going to have about a thousand of run out, which is definitely within spec. So good to go on this one. Going. Alright, uh, now we're going to actually talk about the backlash. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Alright, now we're going to talk about ring gear backlash. Um, and what ring gear backlash is, is uh, you've got a pinion gear and your ring gear and the teeth mesh. And how much wiggle room before the uh, gears actually make the other gear, the dri drive gear actually makes the driven gear move. So we're just measuring the amount of in between the teeth. And to change that, you actually add shims to one side or the other of the ring gear. Um, if you want to tighten it, you're going to go ahead and put it on the back side of the ring gear to push the ring gear closer to the pinion. And maybe take some away here if it's too tight. Or if you want to loosen it, you're going to add a shims to this side of the ring gear and push it away from the pinion to uh, actually make more space. Um, I already got the dial indicator set up here on the ring gear too. Um, and I got it zeroed out just about. And what we're going to do is we're just going to measure how much it will jump as we wiggle it. It's looking like we got about 10 thousandths of a backlash here. You hold the ping in as you wiggle the ring gear. Yeah, we got about 10 thousandths backlash here. Um, and that is actually in spec, so we're looking good. Roll it. All right, now we're going to talk about axle flange run out. Got your axle it comes from the disc all the way up to the end of the axle. Um, or, I guess, the end of the housing. <clears throat> and then on the end of this axle, we've got a hub. And what we're going to do is measure the run out to see if the uh, hub or the axle more so is uh, bent and uh, that will actually cause wobble of a wheel and you could think that it's your rotors or your brakes that are causing the wobble or the tire even but it ends up just being this uh, surface right here, this mating surface just gets warped and uh, out around um, or out of straight I guess technically. What we're going to do is we're going to find a low spot on this and zero out the dial gauge. We've got the plunge up against the face of it. We've cleaned up the face. We'll find the mat. Alright, now we're going to measure how far out the run out. This has got real bad run out. Zero. Oh, actually, it goes the other way. And has just over 30,000 to run out. It's like 32,000 to run out, which I can tell you already is way, actually, I think almost 35,000 to run out, which is way over spec. So, this would actually cause some vibration in your tire if you were to drive on this axle. You'd get some vibration and you might think it's the tire, you might think it's the brakes causing the vibration. But in, that, in fact, it was just the axle flange. And that's how you measure axle flange for now.